We left Volga behind. The endless expanses of Russia stretch before us now. The bridge dwellers had finally decided to believe that we were not demons and let us pass. Anna was right. We invaded their world, and it's not up to us to destroy it, no matter how stupid it may seem. Electricity is a sin. Is that really worse than the lies we were told in the metro about how the whole world was dead and there was nowhere to go? Everybody in the tunnels bought that convenient lie. Once we reach Yamantau, we will at least know if that lie was justified. Since so far, we haven't met any signs of enemy occupation. Even us, the players, believed that lie. Artyom. Artyom. Wake up, dear. Is he up yet? Artyom, the colonel wants you on the bridge. See you later. Come on, wake up. Because it's her turn to sleep. <laughs> you did a great job there. We are not home anymore. So we'd all better act like you did. Smoothly. It's not like there's many of us humans left now. So I hope someday we will be able to trust others just because. Because they are people too. Am I bothering you? Sorry, I'm in a philosophical mood today. Stay here for a bit, Artyom. Oh no, what's going on here? This is great. I wish I could stay like this forever. Artyom, when you climbed those ruins back in Moscow, or with your radio, did you imagine our life on the surface at all? A home for one, a place where we could live, a log cabin on the outskirts of a forest, or how about a bungalow on an ocean shore? Well, you know, there's something great in simply going anywhere like this, together. Through the abandoned stations, the ruins, the wasteland. Especially in our own private compartment. Thinking back, isn't this our honeymoon trip? <laughs> it certainly feels like one, even though it's a bit late. We've only had some honeymoon sorties at best so far. You know, I had a talk with Katya. I'm sitting here recalling that bridge and those people there, and we've been sitting underground for 20 years. And they haven't. So what? These are not the same people who used to build cities, planes, and space rockets. They are just like us in Metro, only even more dejected. They are, essentially, slaves. For real. They work all day and pray all night. Always watched, always directed. Everything is under control. Everything is decided by the community. Well, I mean, Silantius. They don't even have any property. Even their socks belong to the community. They're just entranced with him, with his ridiculous lies about electricity. Of course, not everyone got fooled easily, but if they dare ask questions, they get penance, exercising an electric demon with prayer and the cross. But that's a death sentence. How is a flashlight dangerous? Or a radio? But no, they shun it all. They hide and keep praying. How can you even make people believe this ridiculous garbage within just a few years? <sighs> people in general start believing lies surprisingly easily, don't they? As long as those lies are convenient or at least familiar. Take us in Metro. 
All right, we haven't met the occupying forces yet. If we disregard that shirt I found on an antenna... <coughs> Katya and Crest never met them either. But maybe they are still out there somewhere. And if they are, then they didn't even tell us about them back home. They didn't tell us that the war was still on. They just made us believe that there's no life anywhere outside of Metro. They've been lying to us. Lying non-stop. All this time. Were their intentions good? Perhaps. But the Metro is a castle built on lies. Damn, am I angry. And so far, no matter how far we get, we haven't met a single enemy. Isn't that strange? But Father won't have a word of it. Stay vigilant. Be careful. The enemy never sleeps. You know, I love my father. A whole lot. No matter what. But what if everything he's been told is just another layer of lies? Huge possibility. I hope we'll find out how deep this rabbit hole is once we get to Yamantau. <sighs> well... What do you know? I do feel better now, after telling you. Thanks for hearing me out, Artyom. Let's just sit here a little. Wait, I'm having a very bad feeling about All this. Alright, run along. Dad wanted something. She's getting overly dramatic. She's coughing every now and then for some reason since she fell down on, on, on that bunker. I'm having really bad thoughts about what could happen to her at the end of the story. But um, I'm gonna put those aside for now and just keep on playing. Because I don't really want... For example, if there's cases or scenarios where I would have to make a decision, I don't really want to base my decisions based on assumptions. But it really seems like something, something has changed with Anna. Since she fell down that bunker. Okay, what what is this about? Kinel, come in. Do you read me, Kinel? More hold here. I'm in Gimete. Over. Kinel, Kinel, come in. Kinel, over. That's just great. We'll all try later. Kissing Munch calls us so much. How long has it been since he even arrived in your coots? Not even two years. You better reconsider your position on Meshtikov. Did you forget who started trading with the convicts from Zolotoy? Huh? Well, that was Zakhar's idea. And Zakhar is the man. He crossed by call. Alone. We try not to do anything he proposes at once. Well, Menshikov, I couldn't care less about. Aren't you getting too big in your head? You're so cool now that the relay gang is off your case? Don't fall off that high horse. Go to hell, Dan. <laughs> Alright. I can live with listening to Menshikov if you're so fond of him. Ah, enough of that shit already. The important part is that your coot is still around. And you guys are too. You're right. That is the important part. Well, give my regards to Menshikov. <laughs> Over and out. You devil. <laughs> Over and out. What is going on? Who are these people? Wait, if I go in photo mode... Do no, it's not allowed. Wait, there's radio stations? Like actual radio stations, FM radio stations, music stations, what? What else can we do here? Oh my god, come on, the radio. Let us at least leave this at um or this music. Okay, 
Okay, what can we do here? Lights? Um, I'm guessing this is a place where we could read again all of the journals or of the diary entries that we got from the other places. Wait, we have... Oh, we have a bestiary now? What the heck? I'm not gonna read all of this though. The images are cool though. New world. This can be a very good raid, but I'm not gonna do this on... On the Let's Play. Artyom is a good artist. Look at this. He drew all of this. He even drew the weapons, nice. I'm gonna take my time reading all of these things off the record. That's a really cool feature. How long have we been on the road for? I've been listening to the radio too. Mm. And there was not a single transmission about any occupying force. There's so much regular chatter. So many stories. Dad says all those are coded transmissions, that they all have hidden meaning, but... No, I don't think so. Why would they be so secretive? Why aren't they using this railroad? Why don't they at least control its key junctions? Why did they not install any roadblocks? If they are even out here... This is the main transport artery, after all. Maybe they are not here at all. Maybe they never came here. Or they are already gone. Though, where to? Remember? Neither Katya nor Crest have ever met them. Though, we seem to be doing just fine even without them. It's like Middle Ages. That Silentius is treating people like slaves, getting them killed. I can't believe they had it worse without his lies, nonsense, and human sacrifices. And us? We had been living down there for so many years, fighting each other, and nobody even thought you could live outside. I thought she's gone. She's done already. <laughs> oh. It's like living in a fairy tale. A prince has rescued his princess from a monster-infested dungeon, and is taking her to his magic kingdom where they are going to live happily ever after. Do you think we're going to find that kingdom in the end? Though, if it's with you, I'll be fine anywhere. <coughs> there we go with the buff if again. Happily ever after is the most important part as far as I'm concerned. Dude, come on. Is Hannah gonna die? What the heck? At this point, I won't be surprised because it's a little too obvious. But if she's not gonna die, well, that's better. Leaving already? Girl, I thought you were done. Get them, tiger. Well, let's try sitting down again. Let's see. Let's see if she's gonna say anything more. Let's stay like this for a bit longer. Thank you. I guess that's it then. Time to go. Okay, let me get up. I kind of miss the days wherein she wasn't this sweet, you know, when she was calling Artyom Little Rabbit. <laughs> Think of this workbench, eh? Everything is within reach, yet there's so much space left. Most of the stuff you and the guys found outside and gave to me went into making this workshop happen. So thank you. We'll have to keep pitching in like this too. 
Looks like we're facing a long journey, and useful things like ammo or equipment don't grow on trees. Plus, the further from Moscow we get, the harder they'll probably be to get. So don't forget to collect all the materials you find to keep us going. There's so many things to do. I haven't decided where I'm going to work on the suits, but I'll have to, and soon. Is he talking about armor upgrades? We fixed our uniforms. Some of our people are starting to look pretty ragged, you know. Well, Duke's plate carrier won't hold the back plate anymore, and he jokes that he's lucky it's not the front one, or else his toes would be in danger. Regardless, I am turning this little gang back into a real army. Well, that's it. I bragged enough and won't waste any more of your time. The Colonel summoned you. Yeah, I know. I have stuff to do too. You guys are fast to break gear, but none too expedient to fix it. Yeah, there's nothing new here. Uncle Dokarev! Uncle Dokarev! <sighs> what would you like to ask, Nastya? Uncle Dokarev, do you have a sewing machine? No, I don't. But how are you going to fix the suits then? Yeah, that's right. Well, like everyone else, I take a thread and a needle, and I use a sail stitch. Wow, cool! Can you teach me? I sure can, but later. I've got work to do. Will you let me fix Sam's rifle strap? Well, sure thing. Oh, but under supervision. Sam is so strict, you know. And Uncle Sam isn't strict at all. He's kind. <laughs> all right, look here. I'll show you once. Now we do this. Got that. Yes, and now this way. Yes. Don't rush it here. I see. Yes, yes, and now this way. Got that. No, I think they're on a loop now. Whatever, I mean. Yes, she's so cute. She's like a little sunshine inside the train. Quest really looks like Pavel, moves like Pavel, and speaks like Pavel. Come on, man. A uh, smoke break. That's good. Oh, do you even have toilets? What the heck? This is one mean smoke. Thank you, Stepan. I'm 
sorry to ask, Katya, but Nastya's father. He's dead, isn't he? Does Nastya know? He is. I tried keeping it a secret. Told her he left for the market. Around three days passed, and I still kept it in. I just sat there with a needle in my hand and didn't see anything. It was all black before my eyes. And then she snuggles up to me and says, You should cry, Ma. You will feel better. Sini used to say it. So I cried and cried. She knows. She knows it all. I'm sorry, Katya. I'm so sorry. Let me tell you how we ended up at the bridge. We used to live in northeast from here. Quite close if you go in a straight line. But it took us a month. Everything's bombed to rubble out there. Yermak asked me and I told him. Sini used to say there were lots of military factories out there. Not just military, of course. General industry. And now you can't pass through there even with filters. The radiation is so high. No railway either, just crater upon crater. We were quite far, but our counter still went crazy. One route appeared intact. There was nothing to bomb. So we used that one, thinking we'd get further to the west, but... But of course they did not let us cross the bridge with the diesel. They said it was satanic. They were ready to let us stay if we gave them the diesel to cleanse it. So we stayed. And then we couldn't leave, even if we wanted. That old goat, Father Silentius, brainwashed everyone, so they would just pray and bow nonstop. They broke our diesel down with their bare hands and threw it into the river. Purification. And on top of it, they gave us trouble for not helping them. Senia went to check what was going on, and there were only locals there. Because Silentius, at the Skatina, had sent our people away to test them. He said that if they wanted to be truly accepted, they had to defeat a demon. Senia went to stop them. But it was too late. He only found burnt rags. And then they sent him to do the same. He never came back. Katya, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know. Well, you really didn't. What's done is done. <clears throat> it kind of got so glum in here. Hmm. Perhaps you, Stepan, could play us something. Sure thing! I feel like the note that we found inside the terminal mentioning Nasty and Katya is Senya's note. Yeah, I think it's time for us to go. So full of it. <laughs> Artyom did most of the work. <laughs> that he did. Uh, yeah, he did. But you don't have to interrupt my lies. You asked me about the vest yourselves. All right, go on. So I see Artyom get to the door, and I think it's time I came down. So I do. But something just holds on to me. What does? How should I know? It's dark. Nobody around. But I can't move. And those locals kept going on about Tsar something. So I thought I was in a kind of a bind. So? So I just unfastened the safety and let down. There was that shed down there. The roof was kind of close. 
Uh, and what about the Tsar? Oh, blue! The Tsar was huge! Scary as shit! And there was this rusty bolt, and my carrier got smacked on it. <laughs> 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 well, you, Duke, are lucky you already have a nickname. <laughs> That's hilarious. And what was next? Oh, <laughs> next. Next we jumped that old preacher of theirs. Well, Artem did most of it. <laughs> he swooped in like a hawk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's good. Well, I was clamoring about those beams and fighting that side. <laughs> oh, I'm killing myself. <laughs> well, he basically solved the whole problem. True that. Good job, Artyom. Yeah, you both did well. Crest also. <laughs> sure. He did a swell job distracting those guards. I almost wet my pants with laughter when they started holding that timber. <laughs> he's an artist. Yeah, he's a great guy. You all came out on top of the game. And that calls for what? A drink. You nailed it. You truly are one of us now, Sam. <laughs> Will you be joining us? Nah, not now. I'll have some at dinner. Well, you'll have to catch up then. Sure thing. Anyways, we will just have a little as a warm up now. They're doing this at 10 in the morning? Or at least I assume it's actually 10 in the morning. Great! Ah, that's some good stuff. Uh, guys, there's something I've been thinking about. What does everyone expect of this trip? Personally, I want to come back and tell Sveta of my adventures. So that she'd look at me with her huge gray eyes without blinking and keep saying, You're such a hero, darling. <laughs> so you're expecting heroics and scars. That works. And why did you come? Well, my heart is aching for true romance. But in the metro, all women want a solid relationship, a reliable husband, a real provider. <laughs> Enough of that smug smile. It's unbearable. Not that I've had much better luck here so far. As soon as Katya came aboard, <laughs> Stepan started cooing around her like a peacock. <laughs> you should be happy. Katya is a tough girl. You'd be under her thumb in no time. <laughs> that is unlikely. I'm not the kind of man to upstage his friend in a contest for a lady. Especially when that friend promises to break my arm! <laughs> That's true though. Um, Stepan, <laughs> right away dude, when he saw Katya. I'll catch my stroke of luck soon enough. There in Yamantau, women from all over the country have already gathered, waiting for yours truly. <laughs> How about you, Demir? What made you go? Well, uh, at first I just went along with you guys, uh, the Colonel. But even then I thought, this is my chance to make my dream come true. A chance to see Kazakhstan, my people. But first, we must come back to Moscow, because it isn't fair. People must know that they've put up with enough. They are free. They can live outside now. Not sure in the what metro, do you think though. What about that, idiot? I'm with you, Demir. Yet, freedom is not so simple. There was this freedom fighter, Che Guevara. He died under 40. Comrade Mao, whose book you've been perusing on the other hand, was a strict ruler but lived a long life. Well, we should have expected that from you. <laughs> Weird thing, though, is that you are called idiot. <laughs> I know. It's by his own choice. Because he's so fond of Chekhov. <laughs> Chekhov, too, of course. But it's Dostoevsky for the most part, Sam, my friend. 
<laughs> sure, I read the book too. It's just that I mix them up a lot. Chekhov wrote about that son of Austerlitz, a wounded officer, powerful imagery. <laughs> you are just killing me. <laughs> How about you, Uncle Sen? Got dreams? You know, I just want to ride my board again. Spark a joint up on a beach. Catch that wave. Deep inside, under a grizzled metro dweller, there's still a relaxed Californian inside me. Ah, get out of here! <laughs> so, you know, before Dad talked me into joining the Corps, I used to wear my hair long. He told me they'd make a decent citizen out of the total disappointment that I was, and sent me to college once I was discharged. I joined, and they sent me to the Middle East. Wow, so do you hope your guys would pick you up? I don't see them around. Yeah, I don't hold my breath for my guys. Once this mission's over, I'll submit my discharge papers. I'll reach the ocean, and there, find a ship, maybe? Oh, yeah. Just imagine it. You arrive on that ship, and they go like... Ah, the Russians are coming! <laughs> <laughs> you are one of us now. You don't really need to go anywhere. If we don't put your Ushanka on, they will sink you on sight. <laughs> I won't, though I will take my balalaika with me. <laughs> balalaika? <laughs> well... Who has any expectations for our reception at Yamantau? Well, your expectations, Elyosh, are quite obvious, huh? Scantily clad junior officer ladies on the rolling red carpet? Yeah, I'm a simple guy. How about you guys? Well... Uh, I hope they will answer a few questions. For example, if there is not a single American within hundreds of miles from Moscow, save for our friend Samuel here, why stay on the ground? I'd put it a bit differently. Did you, dearest High Command gentlemen, know that we in Moscow had to spend 20 years on the ground? Oh, by all means, you can ask those while I'm enjoying my briefing with the junior officer ladies, huh? <laughs> I don't know. I'm in the mood for a road trip. Oh, we got ourselves a true traveler here. Yeah. We will have to live and see. You are right. Oh, is that it?
How can Baylor fall for this? It's obviously a random bandit or something. You're a damn mailer. My hands are still shaking. The minister himself. This is incredible. By the way, Artyom, you should take a look at the map. It's so it's obvious that that guy just sounds like a bandit that you know maybe there's a bandit camp or there's a bandit base like right outside where the the ark is. And those are just bandits that they're trying to get in and they're gonna use the Aurora just as the Aurora used the Trigger's caravan to get past the bridge. I don't know, but I'm pretty sure it's someone who's just making a fool out of Miller. It, it really didn't sound like someone from the military. As you can see, we're heading almost straight to the Yamantau complex. Katia and Chris tell me that the line there is in this condition. Surprising, really, taking into account the number of priority targets there. So we can hope for smooth sailing from here and right to the very destination. It's not even that far, but our speed depends on the state of the track. So I think it's going to take us quite some time to get there. So, Yermak, where were we? You are saying it's all about the results. Ah, yes. These soft bellied attitudes must stop. The ends do justify the means. Well, I don't object. But not all ends can be called just. I can't believe I'm playing metal right now. I'm outside without a gas mask on a train. And there's the sun. Holy shit, this is so beautiful. Can I do photo mode? now nice but I can do camera mode though which is stupid I don't have time for this, let's just go. There is a government. So what? We spent so many years apart, so why worry? 